You want to know how to make hard surface repeatable patterns and I'm going to show you in the video coming up. What's going on you 3D modeling beast? This is JL Musi and today I'm going to be showing you how to make any hard surface repeatable pattern. How this video came about, my main man Marco hit me up on Instagram, wanted to know how to create a honeycomb pattern. I decided to do the video and also show you guys how you can not only create a honeycomb pattern, but really just any repeatable pattern and then actually deform it onto a mesh using a variety of deformers. Consider subscribing to the channel as I do Maya 3D modeling tutorials like this all the time. Also make sure to snag your copy of the hard surface modeling cheat sheets, which is a great companion piece to all my YouTube videos. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. I'm going to begin this by jumping here to the front and creating a cylinder. So first I'll go ahead and rotate it, holding down J. Holding down J is going to constraint as you move to 15 degree increments, it's going to snap. Or we could alternatively just put a 90 here. So if we drop this down to six, see that this is going to approximate that honeycomb shape. One of the things that's important here when creating your pattern is you want to choose the primitive that's going to approximate as closely the beginning of your pattern. So I'm going to go to face mode, hold down tab, paint this selection. These are the faces that I want to keep. I'm going to do control shift I. If you know here in perspective, you see that it just basically inverse my selection. I can go ahead and hit delete. So now we're just left with this plane right here. From this point, what we're going to need to do is just extrude out. So we'll go ahead and take the uh, border edges here, extrude and just do an offset. So that looks pretty good. And then I can just go ahead and take these guys here and hit delete. So this is the first part of this pattern. When creating a pattern like this, you have to pay close attention whether it's staggered or not, right? This is a staggered pattern. I'm going to select my object here, go to shading, wireframe on shaded. I'm going to hold down shift to duplicate this. If I figured, hey, you know what? I have that first shape and I'm done, right? Then you would go ahead and proceed to start duplicating this. And this is not going to line up, right? You're not paying close enough attention to how that pattern was built. So in reality, the true pattern of this consists two pieces. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold down shift and clone it out. And then from here, I'll hit D to edit the pivot V to vert snap here, W again to go back to my move tool. And then I'll hold down V here to snap right here. And this is the true pattern. This is the true repeatable pattern. And really, this is the most important part about creating any hard surface repeatable pattern within Maya is finding the pattern and its repeating element. And this is the pattern itself. So now what we need to do is come in here and we're going to go ahead and combine this. We're going to take these verts and make sure that they're merged. And now if we go back to our move tool, we hold down shift and clone this. You see that this aligns properly, right? So now that we have the staggered pattern going, it's time to create the first strip. So usually I like to build out my patterns with the first strip going from left to right. And then I like to get the height going for this. We're going to need a value. We're going to need to figure how much to offset each piece, right? You see, as we move this in the X, we get a value here, right? So what I'll do is I'll hold down shift, move this guy right about here. If we want to be very precise, what we can do is change the pivot again. So hit D, vert snap here, go back to the move tool, hit V. And this gives us a value of 4.24. That's our magical number. That's going to ensure that every time that we move, we're pretty much butted right against this piece right here. Right? So we just needed the value and we needed the direction, which is the X. So we can delete this. I'll go to edit, duplicate special options. And here we need to put the information that we gathered. So with my mesh selected, I'll go to edit, duplicate special options. I'll go ahead and put that value in a 4.24 in the X. I already have one copy. I need a total of 10. So I need nine additional. I'll hit duplicate special. And now you see that this pattern 
the first row is actually selected, right? So what I can do from here, I'm gonna take them all, combine them. I'll go ahead and delete the history by doing Alt-Shift-D this time. It's gonna clear that out. So now I need to know the translate Y. If I go ahead and hold on Shift, I can duplicate this. Again, I'll just snap the pivot here, move it, and then vert snap again. This gives us a value of 2.448. I can just simply copy the value here, delete this, and then now I can do edit, duplicate special again. We can just go ahead and middle mouse click this, edit since that was the last command that we did. We can go ahead and hit zero, and then paste that value here in the Y, and we're gonna do uh, nine copies going up as well, duplicate special. You see that everything snaps up perfectly. So I'll go ahead and take all these pieces here, combine them, Merge the verts, go in object mode. I can delete the history also using Alt Shift D. If you wanted a cleaner pattern, what we could do is just select these faces here and delete them. So this is the first leg of the pattern. Uh, if you needed to deform it, you need to figure out which deformer you're using uh, before you actually give it some thickness. So uh, maybe you want this deformed, right? Maybe this is a grill of a car and you want to give it a slight bend. Maybe uh, it has a little bit of curvature in your car body and you want to project that onto it. So what you could do is grab a sphere and what this sphere right here is going to do is basically approximate really any shape, but this could be the body of a vehicle, right? So what we could do is just give this a little bit more shape. We'll give this quite a bit more divisions So we'll move this up, scale a little bit more. So that looks about right. And we'll just scale this quite a bit more here. So I'm gonna select the object that I want deformed and then the actual influence object, holding down shift. I'll go to deform, shrink wrap, options. And if we reset this, I like to use vertex normals and I'll hit create. And you see that this is now projected onto this object. From this point, you want to make sure you're deleting the history. If we delete the sphere or the influence object, it snaps back to its original form. So I'm going to select both objects here. And I will delete my history. And now we can delete the influence object. And this is baked in. The last thing you could do is extrude this out and give it some thickness. Here's our finished pattern and it's now deformed into place. So maybe you needed this guy in a cylindrical fashion. So depending on the deformer is gonna depend whether you could add thickness on or before. With the shrink wrap, uh, shrink wraps tend to destroy or just pile up or collapse all your thickness on top of each other. But if say we were to use maybe a bend deformer, we don't have to worry about that, right? So we can go in here, we can go ahead and extrude this out and maybe for this guy, we want to go ahead and apply a nice bevel to this. We can select one of these border edges here. We'll go to select and then select similar. Now you see that most of the edges that we want to bevel are actually already selected. These right here are cut off, right? This is a little bit of a different shape. What we can do is just add this shape on as well, right? Add this edge. And then since uh, select similar was the last thing we did, we can just simply middle mouse click and it's going to add that to the selection, right? So we'll, we might have to do this a couple of times to select all the uh, edges that we want uh, beveled. And we'll middle mouse click again. And you see that it's doing a nice job of adding the selection. I'll go in here and add this one as well. And then middle mouse click again. It looks like we got them all. So from this point, I'll go ahead and do a bevel. And this looks pretty good. I'll select my mesh right here. I'll go to deform and then select nonlinear. I'll apply the bend. So with the bend deformer, the bend handle and the orientation is pretty important. You see right now it's how it's up and down. So we want to go ahead and rotate this and we can go ahead and bring the channel box here. I'll hold down J to constraint to 15 degree increments, right? And now, usually, what I like to do is just give it a little bit of a bend to see which way it's starting to work. So I'll go to my inputs, hit this bend here, and start applying some curvature. Right, so it's actually going the wrong way. 
That's telling us that we need to flip this one more time. So again, I'll hold down J to constrain a 15 degree increment and flip it all the way across like this, right? And you see that it's at a perfect uh, nine degree angle. And now if we go back in here, give it some more curvature and we can bend this guy into place. So I'll go all the way in here. Uh, obviously, if you wanted a clean merge, delete these guys. And I'm not gonna do this whole thing, but do enough for you guys to get the gist of it. You need a nice clean border edge. And what you can do uh, with the bend deformer here is it won't let you actually scrub through past 180, but you can manually put in a value that's more than 180, right? So you see that that got us a lot closer. So now if we came in here, maybe did 192, we could keep playing with these values, right? And then after that, uh, we can just go ahead and merge these verts and get a clean uh, cylindrical shape. And then from this, we could just take this and we'll delete the history. And now we have a perfect repeatable pattern that we deformed into place into a cylinder using a deformer. Thank you very much for tuning in, folks. I really appreciate your time. Let me know how I did in the comments down below. And please consider sharing this with any 3D artists that might find value in the information. Until we meet again, folks, I will catch you next time.